voice has decided it wants to not work today. So today we're doing a Halloween project using some of our massive coffin tags. The massive coffin tags are approximately 29 centimetres tall and about, should have got the measurement, shouldn't I, about 10 centimetres wide. <coughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm using some of our stencils just to lay down some texture paste. Putting the texture paste through this stencil because it's a nice thick paste with a, I find the best way to apply it is with an old credit card or a gift tag because you can really just scrape it across. So using a couple of our stencils, using a bat stencil, a, I believe I used the pumpkin stencil in a minute, and the spiderweb stencil. So this texture paste is almost finished, so it's quite thicker than normal. A lot of our stencils um, you can do repeating patterns with, so as you can see here I'm lining up the bats, because I'm wanting to cover the entire area. Looks really cool. So this is a three piece sign that I'm creating. So here is the pumpkin face stencil. So this one's great because it just puts like the scary little pumpkin faces on. It looks really cool when you do this on um, with dark paint on a orange surface or any other surface as well. So again just randomly adding the faces. So all those stencils are available in our online store and I will link them below if you're after them. So our stencils are a great price, they're five dollars, um, five Australian dollars because we are an Australian business. So I've gone and dried that off, I did dry it off, off, off camera, it does take quite a long time to dry. So my phone is bipping at me. And because the chipboard is raw, I do need to give it a coat of gesso. Now my first thought was I was going to use my spray inks on these um, pieces but I ended up using black gesso so this step I could have omitted until the next step but as I didn't know what I was doing when I started I just go with what I think I do so this is basically gesso if you haven't used gesso before think of when you're painting a house you put an undercoat on and then you put an overcoat on or an, a top coat on So gesso is like your undercoat of your house. It just seals the surface and allows your other paints not to soak in on top. So I'm doing the raw chipboard as well as the texture paste because I did, had, as, as I said, I had the intention of spraying, but I decided not to in the end. But if I was using my spray inks, you get a different effect when the spray inks hit gesso to hitting texture paste when you spray it on your project. So I like to just go over the texture paste as well. So just giving them a dry off with my heat tool. Working on the three panels um, all at once, it's great because once you've started the first one, by the time you get to the third one, um, it is somewhat dry, which is really, really nice. So I decided to add some letters to my panels and I want to add some chipboard shapes. So these are the chipboard shapes I chose. Um, these are all on available on our website as well in different packs and you can see that house frame. I'm actually just cutting the frame off the house because I just wanted to use the house portion of it. So just sort of creating a little scene on each of the panels. These stickers are not actually a product that we make. I could have gone and cut letters on our laser machine. We can certainly do that. We do do a lot of custom words and custom things for people. But I had these letters there and they were the right size so I decided to use them. Even though they're orange and black, I do change their colour. In hindsight, I should have actually sanded. These are quite shiny and have a shiny glossy finish. I should have sanded them before I stuck them down. But they still worked out really good. Still worked. So just playing around with the placement so my wording is enter at own risk so just using some express it um, clear gel not sure if that product is actually still available um, it's old from my scrapbooking stash from my scrapbooking days I do still scrapbook it's just I haven't done it in a while keeping too busy lately life is very very busy and business is very very busy we endeavor to get up a few more videos more consistently on this channel just Life. That's all I'm going to say because that explains everything, doesn't it? When you're sticking chipboard on, especially over textured surfaces like this, you are wanting more of a super glue type product. 
than like a PVA glue. So you want to use glue that will hold it really well. The hot glue works really well as well. But I like this one because it comes out in a gel. And my bottle's nearly finished so I have to give it a good old shake and hold it upside down until the glue decides to come out of the tip. I love that curly tree. That is awesome. Because I do have texture paste on the panels first, just giving the chipboard pieces a good press down. And I love how the hat sits on the word. So here I go trying to get the last bit of the glue out. And use the good old finger. That's the worst thing with those type of glues that are not running. They do take quite a while to get down into the tip. While I'm gluing all those on, I'll just take time to um, explain our website. So the website is linked below. It's the same as our business name. We do have a range of chipboard on there and I am endeavouring to get all our new stuff on there at the end of this year, early next year. If you find a chipboard shape that you like but it's not the right size, you want it smaller for an ATC card, you want it larger for a canvas, don't hesitate to contact us and ask. Once we have the shape in our range, it's fairly easy to manipulate the size. It just depends on sometimes if you go smaller, sometimes the shape just won't. Um, allow you to do that because of the fineness. So I decided the the pieces needed a bit of edging or bordering so I grabbed the good old texture paste out and grabbed my cooking spatula or one of my icing spatulas and decided to sort of put a big glob on the side and make it look sort of all rustic and old. So I love the effect of how this worked. And this is a good way to use up older texture paste because this texture paste, I find once the bottle gets to about a third left, there's a lot of air in the jar when you seal it up and it tends to dry out a bit more. This would not have worked as well with my um, newer texture paste that are quite um, running and not as thick. So just adding it, this was so much fun just to sit here and sort of butter it on like icing a cake, it was fun. So that just gave each of the pieces a border and it tied them all in together as well. So even though this is three separate pieces and there's a separate scene on each of the coffins, I decided it needed tying together. We also have the range of stencils that we've used in this video on our website as well. So if you find a stencil but it's the wrong size again, you can request to have it a different size. And that's also for our phone stamps as well. And don't hesitate to ask if you want something custom made. Um, the only thing we can't really do is trademarked items. But anything else is fair game. So don't hesitate to ask. Worst I can say is no. And that doesn't hurt anyone. So just drying the texture paste. I do leave it overnight to dry because I put on a thick slathery layer. It did, it did take several hours to dry. So at this stage I'm still thinking I will um, spray the colour on because I've done that before and I decided to, well obviously I need to coat the chip chipboard shapes I put on and the words as well. So just giving, and the texture paste around the edge, so just giving it all another good go of texture paste. Trying to get in all the little nooks and crannies around the chipboard, between the chipboard, between the texture paste on the side. So when you're doing this you're wanting a really sort of old bristly brush so you can really shove it in between. Shoving is a good word isn't it? Shoving it in between the um, the chipboard. And you're wanting to coat not only the top of the chipboard you're wanting to coat the edges as well. As I said I had intentions to spray the colour on this but then I decided not to do that and paint it with black gesso. I could have omitted this step again and just gone with the black gesso but knowing me I don't really know what I'm doing when I start. I just start and things just come to me. So this project I've cut this video down to about 15 minutes long but it did take several hours to make especially with the drying time because the texture paste does take a lot of drying time and I ended up doing two coats of the white gesso and then decided to do the black so I sort of wasted a bit of time as well but I didn't know that when I started. <laughs> Especially in that tree trying to get around all those swirls and nooks and crannies.
and especially in the pumpkin's um, eyes, nose and mouth as well and the words so they have to go in one direction and then change your direction of your paintbrush and then go in the other direction. Our chipboard pieces are fantastic for um, scrapbooking, card making, off the page pieces like this. They're fantastic for canvases. You can use them in a wide variety of ways. And I hope between the end of next year, the end of this year and the start of next year to show you a bunch of different ways to actually use the chipboard. And I may have some guest designers coming on next year as well. Because everyone has a different style and you just and if I just do it, you're only getting my style of scrapbooking. So I just saw all my style of crafting. I decided to go back over the letters because I did want to uh, um, take off the orange and the black. So I just go and do um, a second coat of those. And off camera, as I said, I do do a second coat over everything. So just drying between layers to get the best result. Now I decided to coat them in black gesso instead of spraying them. So again you're wanting to cover every nook and cranny. It's a bit easier to see with the black gesso. Um, and again I did do two coats because I did want a black black background and then I will put in some silver highlights on the top which just made this look amazing. I'm so happy with how this sign turned out. So these large chipboard tags we have them in a variety of different shapes. We have the coffin, we have the house which I have another project coming up very soon which I've made um, using the house. Uh, we have a mummy, no we have a zombie, a zombie man and a zombie girl and I believe that's it, I believe there's only four of them. Again any shape we can sort of make into this large tag shape um, if you want to request anything custom made. We don't have an expensive custom made service, um, if it doesn't take me a long time to produce it we don't charge you a lot of money. If it's something more unusual or does take a fair bit of time to get the image set up or the project set up, set up is a few more extra dollars but it's not, not a huge amount. So as you can see I've still got a bit of white that I can see reflecting so I'm really, especially in those house windows. So as you can see the chipboard takes it can take several layers of paint. So I've probably put on the back piece, like on the, the coffin we originally started with, I've added texture paste and probably about now five layers of gesso between the white and the black. So they are all our chipboard shapes are made of 1.8 millimeter thick cardstock or box board, it's actually technically called. So they are quite thick and will take a lot of inks and paints and sprays and a lot of liquid as well which makes them perfect for off the page projects. So now the fun begins. So all my pieces are completely dry. You're wanting them to be completely dry before you go and add your silver rub and buff. So I'm using my finger to do the rub and buff because I find that is the easiest way. Easiest way. I can really get into the nooks and crannies and my finger can run over the um, the texture paste in the background and get a really nice look. So just highlighting all the, the edges first and as you can see that not all the edges is a solid colour and that's how I love the texture paste because it's not all flat, I left it all bumpy. So it looks really cool. So just highlighting the texture paste in the background, highlighting the pieces, not wanting to make it completely silver but I'm wanting to bring out certain pieces. And with the rub and buff if you accidentally get too much in the wrong spot you can just rub a little bit of black gesso back over the top to tone it down and then if you tone it down too much you add some more silver. So it's a bit of a layering process. I love how the tree turns out. So using your finger you can just gently brush over the top 
of the pieces and you wouldn't be able to get that same effect with a brush I feel. So the rub and buff it's like a thick paint um, consistency so it's quite thick it's not thin so it won't run anywhere and then all I do is to seal my rub and buff because you rub it on you can if you rub it against your clothing it can rub off so I give it a quick coat of clear hairspray and then it just seals it into, space, into place. So just in a moment, these are nearly done. The last thing I've got to do is actually put some chain on them and some wire to hang the three pieces together. Got a little clip at the end showing it hanging on my wall and I've also got some still close-up pictures for you as well because I know it is a little hard to see the detail um, when I do have the projects on the desk. So just putting enough silver on until I'm happy. Some places are a bit more silvery than others. So here we go. Whoops. I always zoom the wrong way. You'd think I'd learn after doing quite a few years of YouTube. Um, so now I decide that, just seeing how it looks, if I want to add anything, having the whole three pieces together. And I love how I've actually turned the coffin in the middle to go the other way. So just using my cropper dial to punch some holes in the chipboard so that they will hang together. And I'm actually going to put some chain between them. So I'll leave you with the clip in a minute of showing it on my wall and the still photos. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, and if you're after any of these products, check out my website. So I'll try to give you an overall shot of my Enter at Own Risk Halloween sign that I finished. So this is hanging in my house now. Um, I've attached the chain, which I may have done off camera. And I will try to zoom in. I am holding my phone to give you some detail. Actually, I might flip my phone around the other way. Bear with me a minute. Trying not to make you seasick. So there's the first panel. And then we go down to the second panel. going down to the last panel so I love how it hangs it hangs nice and wonky and that's the look I was going for and I just love it with these pumpkins down the bottom or oh, there's a bit of shot of the pumpkins